What's up, guys? It's the Four Horsemen Fantasy Football Podcast. My name is Josh Romine. With me tonight, I got Brent Auker. How are you, Brent? I'm great. Good. I also have Alex Devenny Stoner. How are you, Alex? Good. Uh, we're <clears throat> as per usual for season three, missing mm-hmm. somebody. Yep. Yep. We have no Joshua Van Cleef tonight, unfortunately. Yeah. I think he said he has to be up at 4 a.m. to uh, shovel crap. So I mean, honestly, I think it's time that he just kind of sucks it up, realizes that he, that his job is a literal shit show, mm-hmm. and just hang out with us, and yep. then get four or five hours of sleep. That's fine. Yeah, you, you can you can survive on four or five hours of sleep. He's a parent. Mm-hmm. Exactly. I played Fortnite till four thirty in the morning last night, Boom. and then my daughter threw up at six thirty this morning. So done was- deal. Yeah, it's just, you uh, you learn no deal. to I, I, deal with it. Real, real quick, real quick. Uh, uh, my daughter also goes to daycare. Um, uh, Brent's da- uh, daughter, Brent's son, also <laughs> goes to um, a well, not daycare, uh, like preschool. Um, and neither one of our children are sick as often as yours. You go to a really bad preschool. I no. just I want to throw that out there. They it's don't po- clean their stuff. It's possible. I don't know. Like it, it could be. Could be. Maybe it's just down here in Indy. That's just how things are. The plague. You got the plague down there. A little bit rougher. Well, she's better now, so knock on wood. Yes, she's she's sleeping peacefully. But as much as I'd like to sit here and talk about throwing up and playing Fortnite, (laughs) uh, we're going to record a show. And this show is going to be some news. It's going to be some rookie quarterbacks, and it's going to be some rookie tight ends. Maybe we're gonna struggle through those tight ends, though. I'll tell you that if nobody really wants any of these guys. If we don't make it to the tight ends, I'm not gonna be super disappointed. But uh, I, what? Go ahead. Well, I mean, I think that everybody knows that legitimately, if you are drafting tight ends, you should only be drafting rookie tight ends in dynasty formats. You're never going to want these guys on your your active roster on a redraft league. Just straight up. Right. And like, I don't know, last year was a little bit of hype with some rookie tight ends, but this year, not, not, not so much. Yeah. But no. uh, before we get into the news, uh, get on Twitter, follow us. It's at Four Horsemen Pod. You can also send us emails at it's the Four Horsemen, it's not the, it's Four Horsemen Pod at gmail.com. Uh, still haven't gotten much, but uh, Twitter, I've been actually looking at a little bit more trying to retweet some stuff i need to get some actual um like of our own content to post on there but Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. hopefully i can count on brent to give me some of that maybe you two alex we can start put just putting a few things out there and trying to expand a little bit we're sitting you know like 53 followers and it hasn't changed in like six months so i would i would really like to improve that a little bit yeah, we should give each other got... quotas. We have to go out and promote it, and then each of us have to get a new listener every week, just one. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's a great that's a great idea, Brent. If you can get on that right now and start doing that, it'd be I'm, awesome. I'm shooting out. So I'll text my sources because they don't listen to me. Oh, all right. Well, I listen to them. But hey, I, whatever. Let's go ahead and get into the news. Uh, first things first. New England Patriots trade. Brandon Cooks and a 2018 fourth round pick to the LA Rams for a 2018 first and sixth round pick. Uh, Brent, how does this affect the skill positions in LA? Uh, I I was really excited for Cooper Cup and Robert Woods to really showcase uh, their skills this year, but Brandon Cooks gets in the picture and I like it even more now. You have that downfield presence and those guys will be the uh, first down chain movers i think and it really helps golf and Gurley. i think the most though golf yeah. i think will have a huge step up this year uh with uh an- another year under his belt he's going to get more confident and he has even more talent around him now i i think brandon cooks is a better talent than sammy Watkins, in my opinion but oh, yeah. uh, I, I just think that when you have the better skill position players it's going to help your team and your offense gel a lot better yeah alex uh- I wholeheartedly disagree. Um, I hate Brandon Cooks. I don't think he's a very good player. Um, I think that he lucks into a lot of like uh, you know blown coverage because he's fast, so people try to cover him. Um, however, you know I think that 
honestly, I think that there it was more to do with Goff not getting the ball to Watkins than it is about a talent situation, which makes me wonder, is that going to be the same problem with Cooks? And, and again, like if Cooks will be drafted way too high for his week-to-week production. He is not the kind of guy that you want as your number one. If you can get him as your number two, number three, okay, I can understand that. But the the problem that I have with Brandon Cooks is that he's always, you know, put up there as one of the elite wide receivers in the league. He is not. He is a great, like, you know, best ball kind of guy. He, he's not a week to week performer that you want to have to rely on as your number one. He always ends up finishing toward, you know, almost being a wide receiver one though. I know he's, he's yeah, not, he's not consistent that's not, and that's not it, your it, kind of guy. Yeah, absolutely. He's not the kind of guy that I want on my team because I want a guy that can give me, let's say, 15 to 20 points. Yeah, it's great that one week that he blows up and gives me, you know, 30 or 40 or whatever it is. Right. The problem is, is that, okay, well, that helped me win that one game. Right. For the next three or four weeks, or sometimes like five or six, he doesn't help me win the game. Right. And I think. And you know? I think that's probably what he's going to be in LA again. Like, and for fancy purposes, I don't think it really changes his stock that much. I I don't think no. it changes Brandon Cooks. Brand, I don't know if you agree with that or if that's what you're saying. No, I, think I agree. It's, I think it's good for Gurley and it's good for Goff. Like, I think that that Cooks is going to spread. Like, is he, he's going to he, get he defenders will pull out coverage. there? Exactly. He will pull coverage. Yeah. And Sammy Watkins wasn't a burner. Like, he, he's a good wide receiver, but like. Brandon Cooks is a burner. That's what he does. And I think that it could – I don't think it hurts does Cooper Cup. Does Goff have the arm for that? I, I, that's one thing I don't really know. Like, Goff, you never really hear that he has like a, a – you know, Wentz was always kind of like he has the big arm and Goff was more of like the precision guy. So that's another reason why I'm a little hesitant to say, oh, this is a great signing because they did have an athletic, fast guy and he couldn't get involved. You had, you know, possession guys that were all of a sudden amazing. So I don't see where that that's going to translate into huge fantasy points because we kind of saw the exact same situation last year. Yeah, I, Sammy Watkins went to the Rams a little bit late last season. Like it was yeah, in the pre- yeah. preseason, so yeah. I don't know if maybe he had a hard time reading the. You know, I mean, I don't know how Sammy Watkins is with playbooks, like, yeah, it, but. Brandon Cooks is going to have a little bit more time to learn it. So it, I think it's good for the Rams, but not necessarily great for Brandon Cooks' fantasy value. I think it's going to stay about the same. I wouldn't really drop him or raise him up too much. Um, that gave me to the, yeah, I think to ahead. the general public, just because of the hype surrounding Brandon Cooks, he went to the Patriots and he got drafted earlier last year and now he gets traded to the Rams. I think he's going to get drafted earlier again this year because of the hype alone. Yeah. So I don't think yeah. I'm going to own him in too many leagues, but if he's dropping down to like late third, maybe fourth round, I, I think he could be a great wide receiver too with wide receiver that, one upside. on given That's weeks. great value. Yeah. I'm totally fine with that positioning. The thing is that I have a feeling that he's going to creep up into you know a a second round kind of situation and having said that even if i go running back running back and he's a decent value there i still don't know if i want him as my number one like i just don't think that i can trust him right he's he's a scary one to have as your number one for sure um but that that does give new england two first round picks i know there's been some speculation talking about them what they're gonna do with those picks Brent, I saw you put a little note in there about the possibility of them maybe moving up to get a quarterback or maybe yeah. using yeah, I, one I, of those picks on a quarterback. What do you That makes yeah. a lot of sense. Well, I mean, you know, last year they traded both their quality backups that they had on their team. Jimmy Garoppolo went to San Francisco and flourished over there at the end of last season. And uh, uh, Jacoby Brissett went to the Colts. He got traded there for Philip Dorsett, who hasn't seemed to work out for New England yet. Uh, but, yeah, now they have two – first round draft picks they're kind of later in the first round but even that draft capital having two first round picks you can you know package those together to increase your draft position in the first round if they were wanting to go after a quarterback and there's a lot of good quarterbacks here this year and we're going to talk about them here in a little bit too yeah Yeah, i don't go ahead alex oh no i was just going to ask brent do you think though 
that really, it, even if they packaged both of those those uh, those picks, that they could get high enough to get. I, like I think that they th- there's no reason to like package them and move up because I think those four guys are going to be gone, and so you're looking at a Rudolph or you know some somewhere uh, later down the you know. I don't think I don't know Lamar Jackson could fall that far. But That's what I, I mean. Like I think you're talking your best case scenario. You're trying to get into that twelve to fifteen range where there might be one or two guys still there. Like one or two guys, like who are you talking? I'm like th- yeah, I, I don't probably know. like a Lamar Jackson could still be there. Um, yeah, and, and well, you're I just hoping Lamar- one of the top four guys maybe slide. But I don't think I don't one of those think four guys may know. Yeah, I don't think the four. Mm-mm. I don't I think, think they that make they, out the top ten. Well, I don't think so either. Because, but you're just hoping, and that's what I would think. Yeah, but it's just—I mean, I guess we'll get to it. But like those those four guys, there's already been movement to get into that position by teams. So I I have a hard time believing that that any of those guys would fall. Having said that, I don't think that any of the guys after. Are leaps and bounds so much better? There's any reason to package and move up, right? Is, is kind of what I'm saying. Like, and I think once the draft is starting to play out, if guys are starting to slide, maybe New England yeah. does take that move. I've also heard Buffalo wants to move up. I've also heard yeah. a lot of teams yeah. still want to move up. So we'll see what happens. Yeah, but, but Buffalo I, needs I think, to do something. I think they put yeah. themselves in a position where they could make a move sure. higher up into the first round. I, and get some. I really think that the worst decision they made, like okay, Brissett, I that totally makes sense, but Garoppolo, Garoppolo, I have a hard time saying his name. Garoppolo, Did I think say that might have been Jimmy G. I think that was a mistake. I yeah. think they got a little too greedy, getting rid of both of their quality backups. Who one, you know, this guy is now the what the highest paid quarterback, you know, like which I mean, I don't think he's going to be worth that. But is he going to be a franchise quarterback? Yeah. Maybe, and and, and they already had in, that. In in one or two years, Jimmy Garoppolo's contract is going to look weak compared to what all these uh, yeah, quarterbacks are going to be getting paid. So it, right. the market just keeps changing. You right. know, every like month, you know, almost you know. Right. But see, they could have Aaron like, Rodgers gets paid him. this year. But they they had uh, Jimmy G. <laughs> Uh, and they could have locked him in a few more years at a much lower rate. And they didn't, I mean, what he was like a, it was a third round draft pick, something, you know, what are the, like the value of him is going to be greater than whatever they end up getting. I just don't see a whole lot coming after the, the four. I don't see a whole lot going on. Right. Maybe Lamar Jackson. I, I don't know. I don't, I don't think know. he. And even the four, I'm not really all that sold on. Right, but let, we can. We're going to talk about that more. So let's move on through this news. Yep. We'll get through it, and then we can talk about these quarterbacks. Because uh, another bit of New England news, they evidently Adam Schefter reported that the Patriots are close to finalizing a deal with former Bills wide receiver Jordan Matthews. Any sort of value there, Alex? You like Jordan? Do you think he's going to fit that system? You think he's going to be a He's a possession guy, so yes, he fits the system. Um, I feel like there's a lot of mouths to feed if you've got – well, I don't know. Maybe not so bad. Uh, but at the same time, it should be a late-round pick. Don't overdraft Jordan Matthews just because he's on New England. You know, uh, I think the one thing, though, if you're looking at it, if you can get him late and have him stashed on your bench – an Edelman uh, injury or a Gronk injury, all of a sudden he's going to be up there. And we know that he's a good possession receiver. We've seen that before. We That's when he excelled. So as long as they put him in that, which I'm not 100% sure with Edelman coming back, how they're going to work that out, but he would be a, a nice flyer at the end of the draft or kind of hold on and look at as far as dynasty, I don't really see any reason to hold on to him that much. But I mean, I don't know. Yeah, Brent. I mean, yeah, I mean, just that system. You look at the New England system. Do they ever push the ball downfield? Yeah, they got Brandon Cooks for that. They got Randy Moss for that. But it's not really their system, you know. Uh, mm-hmm. Their system is the slot receiver. 
Yeah. Jordan Matthews excels in the slot. So I completely agree with you, Alex. Like he, he is a, his main skill is possession. Now, does he have a lot of drops? Yeah, he does. But (laughs) Brady knows how to get it to those slot receivers and gets them in space can throw it in a a tight window even. But I'm, I'm saying like Jordan Matthews excels in the slot. It's just a matter of where does he fit into that offense? Because they already have two, three slot receivers already. Yeah. Yep. He's not going to play on the outside, I don't think. Yeah. Don't push uh, him up too far. Yeah. Just yeah. let him, so, if, if he's going to fall, you know, that, like you said, Alex, he's a good option. If something happens, he could turn into something good. Mm-hmm. But uh, I mean, the, the biggest thing with Brandon Cooks getting traded almost opens up the door for a lot more downfield targets for Gronk, in my opinion. Like, I, I think that's, yeah. Yeah. It's going to, Benefit because he's basically the only anything. downfield threat. Exactly. Dorsett, come God. on! Don't forget about Philip Dorsett. Don't um, sleep on, don't no, sleep on my boy. What? I forgot about Dorsett the second after he was drafted because it was such a horrible pick. It was a terrible pick. He was a first rounder. Terrible. But uh, let's let's move on. To the next piece of news: uh, Ravens sign RG three to a one year contract. I was pumped for him. You guys happy for RG3? You think that he I'm has, excited for him. He's got anything in the tank. He was an exciting player when he played, but then he got hurt so quickly, so often, non-contact injuries. You didn't have to touch the guy, and he was already on the ground hurt. Uh-huh. I'm excited just because he goes to the Ravens, and is Joe Flacco anything special anymore? No, he's not. Uh-huh. Like If RG3 somehow, some way becomes a starter and takes that job away from Joe Flacco – like I think all the skill positions get better on that team somehow, and they are the most boring team I know. But this is a spark <laughs> that I think could get them out of the boring stage into just non-boring, not exciting, just non-boring. <laughs> okay, I, I, and I I was a big RG three fan, and he was even on you know in, in division. And I still love the guy. He goes to a team that has garbage, so. What will he have to do if he takes the reins? He will have to run. What will he do? Get hurt. Don't draft him. Leave him alone. He's yeah. not. Yeah, don't, you shouldn't I, draft him at all. Yeah. I, I mean, I like. I'm happy for him. I'm happy for him that he's gonna get another chance. But I mean, right? It's kind of yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, uh, speaking of not drafting at all, Thomas Rawls got signed to the uh, New York Jets. That backfield is a whole lot of a whole lot of blah. I mean, yes, yes, it is. I think, and you know what? I almost want I almost want to throw down that they spend a decent pick on a running back. What? I wouldn't be shocked. What decent pick do they have? Like, you talking like a second rounder? Uh, Do they? What? What do they have? They lost was, all their second rounders. To I was gonna say they traded them all. I was gonna say like, well, oh, that's right, they did trade a lot. Um, I think they they're well, after the number three pick. I'm pretty sure they have a third round pick, but well, then maybe maybe they won't. But like, it, I it just that team is another one that is just so boring. It is so boring. Yeah, I, I there and because of. Robbie Anderson getting in trouble and stuff. I, I'm not touching any of those players. I'm not touching any Jets players. Sure. None. We'll say that. Actually, you- the charges were just dropped for Robbie Anderson, too. Oh, so really? He shouldn't be getting in trouble oh, for well, the league, I don't think. But that's. Well, that might be interesting. He's like maybe the only player I would yeah. not mind having. If you had to pick one out of uh, Crowell, Rolls, Bilal Powell and Elijah McGuire, Brent, which one would you pick? The youngest. Yeah, Mc- McGuire. Uh, McGuire, <laughs> yeah. I, part of me wants uh, – I wish Van Cleve was on the show because I feel like each one of us could take one of these running backs mm-hmm. and have some sort of bet on who <laughs> finishes. And it would all, like, finish as a tie, I feel. like. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. let's. It's let's, that close. But here, here's the thing is that one or two of those guys aren't making the team. They're, they're just not well, like you're not going to have Crowell, yeah. Powell. Like it, it, it's it's too many. It's too many. Like I, I don't know. It, it's too many names to me. Like it's yeah. like no no team is going to have and not even good names. Like <laughs> like garbage names. 
Yeah. <laughs> like players that you like if you look at that as a if if you had those on the fantasy team even two years ago, you're like, Good God. <laughs> like I mean, obviously McGuire was a rookie, but Romine, who are Still. you the most excited about? Two of those guys are on the all Romine teams. So. Yeah, oh, yeah, I'm not terrific. excited about any of them. Like I'm this year, I'm not going to say that liar uh, that I think Cruel could <laughs> sneakily finish as a RB one. I don't. I'd be. Oh, you you <laughs> sneakily? No, you threw it down the gauntlet. This is a top running back, not top at all. Twelve running back, not at all. What I said. I know that's what and, you like to think. Oh, whatever. Oh, you, let's go. Let's go back to the tape. We can go back to the Roman, you finally jumped off the Crowell train, and you watch. He'll be like the number one running oh, yeah. back this year. I, <laughs> I, I hope he does because he's still a member. He'll always be a member of my team in my heart. I care about him. but Just like Ruben Randall. Don't you damn dare say anything bad about Ruben Randall. <laughs> now, there's a man that needs another shot. Oh, somebody, God. somebody find out what he's doing. <laughs> <laughs> Selling ice cream cones on a pier? <laughs> Uh, well, okay. Well, on that note, I'm going to move to the next piece of news. Uh, Brad Evans of Yahoo Sports had tweeted that Jordan Howard deleted all of his Bears-related posts from his Instagram account. Is there is there news in there? It's got to be right. You, every you time think? you hear something like that happens, uh, the guy is gone pretty much within a couple days. Yeah, like every time. I don't I don't ever remember that not happening. When somebody that deletes all weird. their, yeah, I know. Like, why would you do that? Like, you still played for the team. Mm-hmm. It's like, especially like a, a social media thing. That's that's. <laughs> oh, <laughs> laundry's done. Um, it's <laughs> like a, a social media thing is supposed to document your life. Like, it, it's like when you break up with somebody and you just delete them. Like, they never existed. Like, it, it just seems weird. It's like you still played for that team. You still did well for, with that team. You still enjoyed being on that team. I, I don't know, but I swear, if he goes to Miami, I'm gonna be so pissed. Yeah, be so pissed. I mean, what's Chicago gonna do for running back then? Like draft? They have to. Like, yeah. You just, it, and honestly, that's the reason. Like, it, it's such a deep class of running back, and, and they have been so good you know, drafting these like fourth round running backs and putting them in service for a year or two and getting, you know, a thousand yard receiver or a thousand yard rusher. So, Mm -hmm. and I think that we both have to, or we all have to kind of look at and say, okay, was he one of the strongest running backs in the league? No, he was dependable, but he wasn't explosive. And I think that that's probably what Chicago was looking at. It's like, okay, can we get somebody that's a little more explosive so that, you know, that they have a refamped offense anyway. Honestly, it kind of seems like the, the dud was Jordan Howard, even mm-hmm. though I love him. He was kind of the dud of what we were looking at, like with, you know, Trey Burton and you know, like I mean, you, and then, you know, Allen Robinson, like that was, that's an exciting team. And I think that they need, like a Matt Forte type player and Jordan Howard's just not that. Right. Yeah, and it's it could be an interesting spot for somebody to land though. Cause Trey Cohen's not that either. He's too small. Like he's five six. He's too tiny. Like and that's what I worry about. Like the the hype train is already kind of growing on him. And I like him. Especially I'm curious to see how Nagy uses him in that offense. But if his hype grows more because of this I think it could be he's going to end up being a player that's completely overdrafted. Oh, for sure. It, no one, yeah. He is not, he's not a starter right. by any stretch of the imagination. Right. He could be a fun player, but he's not somebody that you want to have in your starting lineup from week to week. No. no. If you have like, like if you have best ball type things, he might be an interesting pick late in your draft. Yeah. That's about it. Uh, that's about his value. Yeah. All right. Well, without further ado, I think that we should move on and talk about some of these rookies. What do you guys think? You like that idea? Yes. So you want to obviously lead them with tight ends? No. Let's just get tight ends over. <laughs> is there a, <laughs> is there a tight end that you know? Like if well, I, I mean, said, we, hey, we, without reading it, 
Like, well, no, because I mean, I, I, I <laughs> well, like seriously, like was there is I there mean, a name that like stands out above any I, of them? I I know of about four just from like research and stuff, but the, like this tight end class, the the biggest concept with this tight end class that I've noticed is none of them can block, but all of them are like move tight ends. They're all like receiving tight ends. Yeah, but none of them can block. So that instantly makes me think, no one's gonna spend early draft yeah. capital on these guys because Nor should they. they want a complete tight end. Yeah. 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 I completely agree. And, and that's, and that's the thing is that another reason why you shouldn't be drafting these guys in your, in your redraft leagues, because first, you know, even with OJ Howard, who was, you know, like everybody's talking about how amazing he was. He didn't come on until the end of the season because right. it, tight end is a difficult position. Um, these guys, like what Brent just said, they're going to be learning blocking techniques. Uh -huh. They're not going to see the field. You, you know, you, they can't block, so they can't be on the field because they're like, you know, an insurance issue to for the quarterback. So, uh, you know, I, I I definitely do have my eye on a couple uh, in dynasty formats. Um, Hurst, uh, I, I, to me, is kind of one of the higher ups. Because yeah. even though Penn State is is my favorite college team, I just don't trust offensive players from Penn State. But I mean, uh, I'm I mean, I would say yeah, Hayden Hurst. He's a great receiver, uh, but yeah, he just lacks a lot of the blocking concepts, and he's going to be a kind of a very raw prospect. But going to the Penn State guy, uh, Mark Jacecki, that guy blew up the combine. He had a very fast forty time. And uh, he, he was like a freak athlete. I've watched some videos on him. He's even got some outside of football where he, uh, he he's like he's dunking the ball like a basketball player. And any, anytime I see a tight end doing dunks and being an elite athlete in basketball, I instantly mm -hmm. think Antonio Gates. So I kind of move yeah. him up my rankings a little yeah. bit just yeah. because of the, the athletic side of things. Yeah. Um, did you have anything else on well, uh, Jacecki? Well, well, I I wanted to say something about Hayden Hurst too. Oh um, yeah, go ahead. Did, did you realize he's he's uh, twenty four years old already? He's gonna turn twenty five this August. So yeah, oh he's an God. old prospect. Mm -hmm. Wow, I didn't realize he was that old until I saw that. Yeah. Something about he uh, actually went to uh, minor league baseball before mm. he actually went to football. So I, yeah. I don't know. I guess it caused him to go back a year, but I don't know. Right, and I mean, if you're drafting dynasty, it's something to consider. Like, if it's going to take them a few years to, you know, those rookie tight ends don't normally do very well. In yeah, the first couple of years. And, and to be completely honest, you almost want to avoid all but the two guys that we were just talking about, unless you have like a taxi squad where you can sit them and and forget about them for a while. Right, um, because outside of those two nothing is going to push them to the top. You know, mm -hmm. you're, I think that one thing that we definitely need to, to just put outside of our mind and never think about again is the next Gronk <laughs> is just stop. Just don't because it's not like, I just, I don't think it's going to happen uh, unless it's just by some accident that it, you know, they fall into the right, you know, position. They are completely well-rounded and they just, flourish and, and it, this class is not that right so it just doesn't just happen don't. anymore it don't, doesn't yeah. right it, it doesn't happen the first year especially or the first three years like it normally yeah. it takes a while for tight ends to like it took progress. it took what two three years for kelsey it took two three years for Ertz. Mm -hmm. you saw flashes yep. just with them but still yeah. it took you three some years to for them yep. to actually break out and become those elite fantasy tight ends that we're used to yeah and like the, you, you look at what like evan ingram kind of did last year and how he's moved up this year like i i, I don't see that in this year's class no. and that's what well, you're I looking mean, for is like somebody that well, could be that wide receiver that's that all was a product too. of Od yes. Od odell beckham went down with injury so you right. know well, he's right. gonna get him. targets by default yeah, well, not just him. I mean, sure. basically, the first four wide receivers yeah. went down. They had no running game. That's kind of what I was talking about. Is that you fall into the right, you know, situation, which Evan Ingram did. I mean, not right as in like you know good, but just the right situation for him. Right. So he's going to be, you know, 
he might actually end up being overdrafted because of that rookie season because sure. he's got you know he's going to have a, the, the full you know gamut of everything around him and maybe even a a Barkley uh, coming into town which you know again would uh, you know so you shouldn't expect that ever and so right. you should never draft it as such right yeah, and that's the good thing about these tight ends is that none of them are that flashy that I think they're going to get moved up too far to where they're getting overdrafted. You know, these guys are going to fall, and especially in redraft, I don't think you have to worry. Don't, I would just forget this whole list. And yeah. Um, I can't even think of a situation where I would be super thrilled with them landing. Like, I just, I don't know. I don't see it. Maybe something will happen in the draft where that proves wrong. You can take a late round flyer, but none of these guys are going to be moved up the boards. So, yeah. Um, Brent, unless you have anything else to say about uh, it. I just had uh, two more names. Mark Andrews from Oklahoma, uh -huh. very mm -hmm. prolific yeah. in college. He had over 1,000 yards and uh, I think like 90-some catches or something last year, along with nine touchdowns. Baker Mayfield was throwing him the ball, though, so it makes me think maybe you have to have a somewhat decent quarterback throwing this guy the ball. Mm -hmm. So if yeah. he gets drafted by an actual team with a good quarterback – Someone to maybe look into for dynasty, Mark Andrews, you, Oklahoma. You know, um, what? Oh, I was just saying. I uh, I was just looking at the list that you made. There are actually quite a few teams looking for run uh, for tight end. So uh, I mean, mm -hmm. that's something to kind of look out for. And then um, Dallas uh, Goddard from South Dakota State. He was also a, a highly targeted tight end in college, and uh, he's also a move tight end reception guy but he could be a nice sleeper value if you're looking later in dynasty drafts i, I kind of like dallas goddard quite a bit yeah i thought i heard something about jordan akins but i can't remember what <laughs> like i don't know that, that name think, sounds very familiar like i read you think you're point. thinking of clay aiken <laughs> singer <laughs> That's what yep. it is. That's it. Oh, that's gosh. that's it. Yep. If I was invisible. Okay. Don't <laughs> please don't do that again. I would just watch you in your room. Okay. Oh my God. All right. Sing well, it louder. Hey, yeah. On, louder, please. On that note, let's go ahead and talk about some quarterbacks because kind of the opposite of these tight ends, like this this tight end class, this quarterback class is super hyped. Half the league is looking for a quarterback right now. Yeah, They're like half the league. I mean, well, and like we we kind of already talked about, you know, there's there's a top four, right? It's it's yeah. pretty clear. There's a top four. You got mm -hmm. Josh Rosen, Sam Darnold, uh, Josh Allen, and Baker Mayfield, right? And Can we all agree that that's it, clear? The, yes, clear top tier. Yeah. Yes, yeah, absolutely. And, and but the thing that I find crazy about this is that no one can discern who is the better uh -huh. of these guys it kind of yep. seems like if they're if you really were putting it i think that i don't know i feel like baker mayfield has kind of trailed off just a little bit i, I don't know if that's what you guys have been noticing but like i noticed that what was that i i thought i thought that earlier on prior to the combine but he had such a good combine and results and interviews from that that it actually yeah. bumped Baker Mayfield up into that top four. I thought. Have you been Have you been seeing him as the number one overall pick in in, in, in drafts? Because like like that's the thing that I've been seeing is that I've been seeing Rosen and Allen, like kind of switching back and forth, and then see I I've seen it all. I I've seen. Yeah, yeah. I've Any seen of these four all. guys just, yeah. going number one overall, but I also see all four of these guys going in the top 10, 11, 12 picks too. Yeah. Uh, I, I just think, in my opinion, this quarterback class is the best like overall quarterback class since Eli, Phillip Rivers, Big Ben all came out. Uh, and those guys, they became, you know, franchise quarterbacks for their own respective teams. Yeah. And they're still with those teams to this day. Like these are yeah. these quarterback prospects. I feel like could be the next franchise quarterbacks, the next great quarterbacks to come into the NFL. This class, I think, is good. It's real good. I, I feel like it could be that, or it could be like Christian Ponder. Um, oh gosh, who's the other? Uh, the um, uh, Blaine Gabbert. 
like uh, that that year was it 2010 or 2011 or whatever it was like i don't i don't See, know i, I think I that know. when you get out of these top four then you get into lamar jackson who i think is in his own tier and then you mm-hmm. get into a couple other think, guys yeah. that are in their own tier uh but like i feel like mitchell trubisky last year was the top quarterback that was drafted. I feel like yeah. he falls into line somewhere around that seven to eight range in this class. Uh, I think really? that that's a in, little excessive. In my opinion, like, that is what I, I think. You think like seven a, or eight? I don't know. I never, th- like, I never thought Mitchell Trubisky was all that great. I, I thought well, he was no, the top I, quarterback I in that, that class. But this year, I, I've studied these quarterbacks, and I think they are legit. I think they are the next class to, you know fall into the NFL ranks. I think they're going to be great. I really do. At least four or five of them will be. Well, who's your, who's your fifth then? My fifth is Lamar Jackson, but I have other reasons for that. I, I think he's a better version of Deshaun Watson from last year. Why? Well, I- Why? It's just, I think he has a better overall athletic ability. I don't think his leadership as is as good as Deshaun Watson, which is what, he's known for was his leadership capability and getting the team to around him. But Lamar Jackson, I think is just a bigger version of him, a uh, more athletic version of him. And I, I think he's just, he could end up being that next Michael Vick. If you think about it. Uh, I kind of think though, it, depending, obviously depending on where, where he goes, if you have a dynasty league, you're probably going after those first four guys. If you're in a redraft league, I think Lamar Jackson is going to be the top player that is should be taken because yep. those types of, of quarterbacks always hit the ground running. They usually don't have a long shelf life, but they hit the ground running and they are fantastic for that first year until their division, their conference adjusts to defending that kind of player. So depending on where he falls, he could be a guy that, it could be, you know, RG3, Deshaun Watson, like those kinds of guys that just hit it and just go. Yeah. Who's your who's your favorite? Alex, do you have a favorite out of those? <sighs> out of those five. Pretty much those five are I mean, the I like ones anybody like, cares about, but I uh-huh. like Lamar Jackson. Um, I also like Josh Allen. I, I think I think really if I'm being because I am kind of on the other side of where, where Brent is. Like, Brent's looking at these guys and saying, you know, like 2004, and I'm looking at these guys, and I'm like Christian Ponder, Blaine <laughs> Gabber. Like, I, I don't know. I, and But I feel like um, Josh Allen might be um, the, the, the best one. Uh, I don't have a lot of, like, real reasoning other than I think that he has, you know, good you know ball skills and like you know uh, just from some of the stuff that i've looked at and read into he could be a good um because like he's he's got like a pretty good arm doesn't he i was pretty sure that was yeah, one of the things he, that i read he has yeah. the biggest he's, arm in the class yeah, yeah. he has, and he has all the physical fact. attributes height weight i mean his mm-hmm. arm skill yeah the worst yeah. part about his game is his accuracy he only had like 53 to 56 percentage completion percentage, I guess, uh, throughout college. And that, and that was a going to a smaller school too. And yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and that's kind of what I think that's one of the things that I could see him being like a Joe Flacco type, you know what I mean? But his biggest comps right now are uh, big Ben actually just based on his size coming, you know, coming from a smaller school, like big Ben went to uh, Ohio. So, Miami, Ohio, or yep. or was it yeah. Ohio? Yeah, okay. Is either that or Akron? Yeah, I can't remember. But yeah, I can't remember. Yeah, um, yeah. I don't. I don't know who. Who's your favorite, Brent? I would say my favorite for fantasy is Lamar Jackson. Yeah, I think my yep. the and right now it's 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 kind of a tie for me between uh, Sam Darnold and Baker Mayfield. I, I haven't really decided who I like the best, but. I, there's something about Baker Mayfield. That guy knows how to produce as a passer and can still produce as a runner. See, um, 
But yeah, go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna say, I feel like he has he's more well rounded. He's like, smaller. He, he doesn't but... have he doesn't have the ceiling, but I feel like he has the higher floor. Yes. I, I I don't know. Uh, yeah. I, I, like I just kind of thing think is, that but he's that's gonna be thing, a though. decent quarterback. I don't know if I he's mean, gonna be great, I, but I feel like his ceiling though, I mean, we saw him last year against Oklahoma State and Mason Rudolph opposing mm-hmm. him. Uh, he threw for 598 yards and six some touchdowns. Mm-hmm. That's a pretty good game. Yeah, yeah. that's pretty. I'd good. say that's a pretty good game pretty in college. <laughs> he's feeling, I mean, he knows how to chuck the ball. And yeah, yeah. Um, Drew Brees, we've seen he's a smaller quarterback, and he's been a elite quarterback for a long yeah. time. So it's it can happen, I guess. Yeah, I, I don't. I'm not a big fan of that whole like, oh, if you're you know six foot then you can't play quarterback. Like right, there's right. plenty of good, decent quarterbacks that are, you know, six, six, one or something like that. So what about you, Romai? Uh, like, I don't know. I, I really like Lamar Jackson this year. And depending on where he lands, I think has got a big part of it. I think that he's got the most, he's the most likely to have immediate fantasy value. Yeah. yeah I think, um, I think that, yeah, we're all in agreement of that. Yeah. But it really, I'm curious to see where these guys end up. You know what I mean? So yeah. what what I want to pose to you guys, um, I just want to go through them real quick and have you tell me, like, we'll just go right in order, and we'll go, we'll start at the top of our list there. And Brent, I want you to tell me who you think will be the first quarterback taken and where you think they're going. So actually look at the draft <clears throat> order and tell me where you think the first quarterback will be. I think first quarterback taken is Sam Darnold, and it will go to the Browns. Okay, I agree. I agree. You the only, the only, I like. I love Sam Darnold. I think he has such a great skill set. He has the size and everything you like. The only thing I don't like is his arm motion, <laughs> yeah, which can be fixed, but it's also instinct, so it could get yeah. him into a lot of trouble too. Like he has the worst arm motion I think I've yeah. ever seen since maybe Christian Hackenberg. Or is it worse than Blake Bortles? Blake Bortles or <laughs> <laughs> I was uh, gonna say if, if you want to talk about being able to fix arm motion, don't ask Blake Bortles about it. Oh no, no, because <laughs> that's what everybody told him too, and he can't fix yeah, it. Yeah. No. <laughs> it's it's still there. Okay, so so Darnold going to the Browns, Alex. Yeah. Who do you think will be the next one, and where do you think he's going to go? I th- like I'm, I'm kind of going. Um, I don't know, and this is completely just an instinctual kind of thing. Uh, looking at uh, Josh Allen to the Jets. Yeah. So, who do you think the Giants take in that scenario? So, if you have Josh Allen I, I going think, to the Jets. Okay, I honestly, if if Cleveland doesn't grab um, grab Barkley then the Giants are going to grab Barkley. If the Giants don't grab Barkley, then Cleveland is going to – oh, wait, wait, they have four. Sorry, the Jets. Uh-huh. Yeah, so I, I don't think – you know, it's going to be – Barkley's going to go probably two or four. I two, three, say. or four? You think that yeah. he'll, he won't make it out of there? No. Brent, Brent, do you kind of agree with that, or do you think – I mean, that's that's the biggest question mark of this draft is – does a team take the best overall player in the draft? And that's mm-hmm. Saquon Barkley. Yeah. Yep. And it's such a replaceable position, but he is an elite athlete to the point where it's so hard not to take him in those top four picks. Mm-hmm. And and nobody's even talking about like Denver kind of needs a running back too. And they have mm-hmm. the five pick. Mm-hmm. Do you see, see Saquon I, going to Denver at five? I like, see, I see them going with Mayfield. I don't know why. I just feel like they – they draft a quarterback. Yeah. I mean, there's uh, the quarterbacks are just going to be the hot topic in that yeah. draft. You know, it's, and it just depends on where the chips fall. I think it's, it's, I don't know. I, I do think uh, if Sam Darnold goes number one, I think Josh Rosen goes to the giants yeah. or they take a defensive player and then the jets are going to take a quarterback and it's just kind of whoever's left at that point. And, if it's the Jets, I feel like they're probably going to take Baker Mayfield because maybe they like a little hothead. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. That that nameth kind of you know like yeah. swagger. Yeah. I, I yeah. can see yeah. that. Um, okay, so if we've got Cleveland and the Jets are both taking them, 
how many quarterbacks do you guys think are going to make it out of that top four then? Uh, Alex, you just think it'll be two? I'm assuming. Oh, you, in the top four picks, you mean? Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah, I think that there's uh, there will be, you know, two. Well, I mean, okay. If. <sighs> yeah, I think just two. I don't. I don't know. I like the Giants should get. Okay, if the Giants don't take Barkley, then they probably will go quarterback. Like, I don't see them going after like Chubb. You wouldn't think so. So, so it, it it could be three, or it could just be two. And like, could you see like they could possibly trade out of it? I guess if they get there, and like, it's just I feel like anything could happen. Like, I'm so excited for this draft to see how it plays yeah. out. Like, you look at all yeah. these scenarios, and like, I could realistically see a ton of things happening. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I mean, how often do we look at a draft and just say, I have no idea who's going to go number one? Mm-hmm. I, I mean, it, it could be one of five players. Like, mm-hmm. yeah. when was the last time that happened? Like, unless they or even if you want to throw in Chubb, you could say six. Yeah, I mean, it, like, I don't think that he's going to go one, but I'm just saying, like, I early, early on. I saw things that had Chubb going number one overall. Right. So, I, I mean, I, I, it's not completely out of the question because he's the best player on defense. So, you know, if if for whatever reason Cleveland decides, okay, well, we're going to make our defense better and then, you know, get our offense on the back end. But it it's, it is kind of crazy. Like, I think that speaks volumes to how good this class is, not how – you know, weak it is. It's just so deep at so many positions, and there's yeah. so many great players at quarterback, running back, uh, wide receiver. Not great on the top end, but it's deep at yeah. you know the same yeah. level. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then tight end. You know, we just talked about that. <laughs> <laughs> I just like I, I'm looking at this and trying to see. I just I feel like three quarterbacks go in those first four picks. I'm the same way. I think three go. I also think that it could be four if someone trades up. Yeah, if oh, the Browns, yeah, see, yeah, for sure. I could see yeah. Cleveland trading that fourth pick and go down. Who would they? Yep. Who would they trade it to? Buffalo. Oh, Buffalo, Miami, New England. Miami. Like, okay, maybe here's, Arizona here's wants to a, jump in that mix. Uh huh. Okay, it, now this is a complete, like it, it, it's kind of a ridiculous pick. However, if Miami, because you know, let's say all the all the the big four are gone. And you look at Miami, do you think that they would go and get Lamar Jackson? Like basically, you know, overshooting because, you know, he's more like in the teens and the 20s. Can you see a, a team that is desperate? Grab that quarterback because the first four are gone and they're like, there's only one left. Because honestly, I think after Jackson, you're dropping way down. Mm-hmm. Yep. way down for Rudolph. Mm-hmm. Uh, like, I think there's a huge gap. And I think that that could push Lamar Jackson up into a point where we're saying, okay, in the top 10, five quarterbacks went. That would be well, insane. Didn't we kind of see it, see it last year with wide receivers? Like all of a sudden Corey Davis was off the board super early. Yeah. Yeah. And then right after that, it was Mike Williams. Mm-hmm. And then right after that, it was John Ross. Yeah, yeah. that's true. Yeah. Like it almost forces teams into, panic mode like oh we better yeah. go get that guy before he's exactly. gone you know yep mm-hmm. where so would you I, yeah where would you like to see lamar jackson end up then like in in that scenario like where would be the most exciting spot i mean everything's rumored right now is uh arizona right there at that 15th pick and i think that's a perfect position oh, to grab him God, and i would awesome. love to see him yeah. in arizona yeah they've got so that's- many pieces and I mean, he would just expand each of their roles. And well, he would be prolific. What's crazy to for me is that like it almost instantly changes like that little bit of scaredness I have on David Johnson. It would it would change yeah. it so much yeah. and make me like so much more excited about him. Like it makes me want to fall in love with him again. Like and the, the coach of Carolina is uh, Steve Wilkes, uh, former Carolina defensive coordinator, right? Hmm? Say that again. Is Steve Wilkes the coach of the Cardinals now? Yeah, I'm pretty sure he was in Carolina. Oh, oh, I mean, he okay. has experience mm-hmm. with Cam Newton. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, if if Landry was still in Miami, 
I would be really excited if he went to Miami. But because Landry's gone, I'm, mm-hmm. I would not like it as much. Right. It, like, I, I look at it and I say, okay, you know, first year quarterback, who are you going to be dumping it off to? Your running backs, your tight ends, which they don't have, right? I mean, who do they have? Who? They, they don't have in uh, Miami. Devontae Parker. No, no, I mean tight end wise. Oh, yeah. tight end they, Julius Thomas still. Yeah. Oh, is, is he still there? Oh, okay. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Blah. Uh, yep. Yeah. Exactly. So, um, and, and then Devontae Parker. Tight end. Yeah. <laughs> and Devontae Parker is there, but I mean, I think that we're kind of like I'm. I'm pretty much breaking up with him. I'm sick of him. Well, I'll, Devontae I'll Parker. It. Devontae I'll Parker it. went to Louisville, same as Lamar Jackson. Well, but uh, I mean, like if they if they could get somebody that would be that possession receiver, I could get excited about him going to Miami. I'm not like Buffalo is another one of those. Like a couple years ago, I was super excited about them, but God, like they made the playoffs and they've just kind of blown up their team. I, I don't really understand. Yeah. That was an interesting situation. I could see Lamar Jackson ending up there though. Like it, it's, it, I'm really curious to see. I would love for him to go to Arizona though. I think that's my, yeah. What I want to see happen personally. Yeah. Just like, Arizona would be very interesting and, and probably yep. the best spot fantasy wise. Well, I, I know that we kind of spent most of our time talking about those top five, really kind of the top six, but I, do you want to say anything else about those other guys? I feel like really when you're talking dynasty or even redraft, whatever you're talking, like the big names are going to be those first five. Other than that, I feel like you almost just got to wait and see how it ends up where they go before we make any sort of judgments on it. Like I don't really want to talk about them. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's who who goes to, um, who goes to Pittsburgh? You know right. who who goes to New England, who right. goes to Jacksonville. Uh, you know those kind of of moves that you're they're not going to be the first rounders. They're probably going to be second, third, heck, right. maybe even into the fourth. I mean, more likely than not, the second or third. And, and those are the guys that you're going to draft in dynasty because of their the systems that they're going to be going into and things like that you know like what the situation is with the quarterback and you know you know some of these guys you could look at and you could absolutely love i mean i was a big fan of connor cooks and then he went to the raiders and he was completely useless so i mean you can fall in love with some of these other guys but it all depends on where they go right And that's kind of the point. Like it's, it's really not even worth discussing right now. Mm -hmm. We have to wait and see how it goes, but it is, it is exciting to talk about these five quarterback prospects coming in because it's Mm -hmm. exciting. It's just, there's a lot of hype around it and pretty much anywhere that they go, there's going to be a team spending draft capital that is going to be wanting to put them in some sort of position, probably to start right away. So, Mm -hmm. all right. Well, that was fun. It was nice to actually talk some rookies in depth a little bit. Yeah. I'm getting more and more excited about fantasy draft season coming up. Uh, we are still working on our mock right now. We're what like maybe? Oh wait, is it to me again? Probably. It's a sorry, little. Gosh, it's a. I'm it's sorry, a little over guys. halfway through. No, you're fine. Oh man, it's, it's, it's a, a long day. It's a slow draft, but uh, <laughs> I want here coming up. I want to do um, one of those draft wizards. And have you guys ever messed around with that? Brent, I know you have. They automatically set everything. Yeah, yeah. Fantasy. I think it's Fantasy Pros that does that, yeah. right? Yep. So they have a draft wizard where you go through and it will use like consensus rankings to put out a draft. I listened to Fantasy Pros uh, do one on air. It was Mike Taglier. Uh, and another guy, I can't remember his name, but they went through and did one. It's pretty fun. I think that that could be a cool little exercise, and it's it's a little bit more fun doing it that way to where you can talk through your guys' strategy. And uh, but I think that on an upcoming show we might we might possibly do one of those. Um, we are going to be getting right into the draft here soon. It's only a few weeks away, so we've got lots and lots of new information that's going to be coming up on the show. So stay tuned. Uh, like hey, I mentioned, yeah. What's up? Next week, running backs. Yep, wide receivers, yeah. but running backs mostly. Rookie running backs. Yes. Oh, 
Yeah. I, yeah. Mm. It's, it's probably just going to be straight 55 minutes of us talking about just running just backs. Those beautiful running backs. Mm. <laughs> but uh, thanks for stopping and listening to us. If you made this way all this way through the show, thank you very much. Uh, huge shout out to our Russian listeners. We got quite the, yeah. the, the Russian following. <laughs> so, uh, you know, and Japan. Hit, hit me up hit me up on the old twitter at four horseman pod uh, i'd love to i'd love to hear from some of these guys that are listening so uh yeah but other than that we will talk to you guys next week peace